Okay, I think let's start the session. Okay, welcome everyone. I uh, see you've got quite a small crowd today. Um, maybe it's too late in a Friday afternoon. Everybody is maybe taking the weekend already. But remember, this is all recorded. We will send it out to you lecturers. Um, they will then upload that for you. So um, even if we're just a small crowd, we're still going to do the webinar. Um, please, if you have any questions, remember to ask it in the chat box or contact us, us afterwards. We are more than glad to help you. We as MECAD, we're still here, still fully operational. Um, please send us your questions. So just for today, we're going to look at SOLIDWORKS, the, the Wildman side. Um, again, it's just another one of the features of the multiple features in SOLIDWORKS. So we're going to quickly look at Wildman's. And I'm also just going to add on last week where we we spoke about the sketching. I'm just going to look at a quick example of 3D sketching and just when are you actually going to use a 3D sketch. And then afterwards, Eofan is just going to show us some flow simulation, um, just what is available in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation in the package that you already have. Um, and then you can actually decide which package you want to use. So Eofan will go through the different options in flow simulation. Okay, I just want to click again, just again, um, it's, I'm Pierre and Irfan, both mechanical engineers, uh, application engineers with MECAD, and we are part of the early engagement team. So we are bringing you this webinar series every Friday. Okay, so just the agenda, again, there's the Wildman's, then 3D sketching, um, flow simulation introduction, and then afterwards we can just do the questions and closing. So we can have a nice quick session today, just getting all of the information out to you. So what is 3D sketching? So normally we would take a plane and we would draw on that specific plane. 3D sketching is where you can actually go in th three different directions. So if you have your coordinate system, you can either go in the Y direction, the X direction or the Z direction. So this is now where you just have to keep focus on in which direction or in which plane you're actually drawing. Because remember, even if you go into point one one one, that is still theoretically on a plane. So you can go and draw on different 3D points. Okay, so we're just going to look at how can I make a drawing that has three coordinates. So just how to start a 3D sketch, um, how to switch between the planes, then creating sketch on a plane if you actually want to use a plane. And then also you can convert a solid into 3D sketches. So I'm going to take the entire solid. I'm going to select all convert entities and I've got a 3D sketch. So let me jump right into that. Okay, so no questions yet. Okay, so very importantly, again, we're just going to start off a new part. I'm just going to use my default part template. And now the next one. So last week we were just looking at the sketching and we also looked at sheet metal. So the tab we're going to look at today is going to be weldments. But before you can actually start a weldment, you have to have a 3D sketch. Okay. So first point this time is we have to have a 3D sketch. And then I'll just show you how you can add weldments. So 3D sketch can be found either with the weldment tab or if I'm in my sketch tab, in the drop down between below sketch, we can actually find one that says 3D sketch. Okay, I'm just going to start off with this one. So I'm going to click 3D sketch. And now you'll notice that it, it looks theoretically the same as a normal sketch. But remember, I showed you previously if you do a 2D sketch, it will actually take it normal to that plane. Now you just have to keep track that we're not normal to any plane because we're anywhere in space. And still, all of the same types of sketching your squares your circles your straight lines everything is still applicable i'm just going to start off with a line main thing to focus on and that i want everyone to notice now is you will notice that there's an xy okay xy if i look at my theoretical coordinate system means that i'm drawing in the plane of x and y so if i put a paper plane like that for example i'm drawing there so I can use an example like this, or if I go and I press my tab button, now it's in my YZ. So it's technically in this plane. So I'm drawing here now. If I press tab again, I'm in a ZX. Okay. 
So that's just your three different planes that you can use. And to switch between the different planes is just my tab button. Okay. So how am I going to start it off? Again, I'm just going to start off at my zero point. Technically, that's now zero, zero, zero. And you'll notice now you're on my left hand at, with the relations. There's now three options. So you can either go a long X, a long Y, or a long Z if you want to. Also, look, if I go in a collinear line of one of my axes, there's a blue line that will actually highlight. So that is just to guide you to say, okay, you are working in this collinear line now. If I go over my Y, you'll notice that there's now a collinear line. So it just snaps to that line, just making it easier for yourself. And then the same rule apply if I go into this way. So again, either way, it'll give me specific guidelines. For my example, I'm just going to go straight up. Again, I can either go and click or like I have my sketch numeric input, if I type in 100 into it'll actually place that there. So now again, same applies. I can go in any direction. So I might go 100 into minus X. But what if I want to go into my positive Z direction now? So technically it looks like it's going in that direction, but remember we have those different planes. So I have to press Z, uh, tab, sorry, to go into the Z direction. So now I'm on my Y, Z. And again, you'll notice that the collinear lines will actually appear. And I'm just gonna do the same. I'm just gonna make 100. And now I want to go back into my y x just press tab again until i reach the correct one so let me just finish this sketch and then you'll actually see what i mean with that okay so if we have our sketch like that so if you look at it currently if you look at a perpendicular it looks like a 2d sketch but as soon as I start to rotate this, you'll actually notice that that is a 3D sketch. Okay, so that's just one of the many examples of when you'll actually use a 3D sketch. If you want to make it easier for yourself as well, maybe just go and add center lines between points. Because with that, you'll have a better understanding of where you are actually drawing. So now you can see it's almost like you have two halves or two pieces of a box. And then you can go and add specifically to that. So even if I want to draw a square, I must just always remember that I must be in the correct plane. So if I want to draw a square on this top face, I can now either go and draw this one. So I must just go make sure I must be in my ZX. So there's my ZX. And then for example, I can go and draw a box there. So in space, now you'll actually notice that that looks like it's there in space. And I need to maybe just go and put all of my coordinates at the correct location. So you'll always notice that sometimes, depending on where you click, it'll actually go and place that. But I can go and move this. So this could maybe be minus 100. And in the Z direction, it might be 100. So there's different ways of how you can go and play around with the 3D sketching. So you either can give it a specific coordinate or you can, with your sketching, you can actually go and place that in space. I'm just gonna undo what I draw now, just control Z. Maybe that's something that you didn't know. If you made a mistake, you can just control Z and it will actually go back to your previous one that you had. Okay. I'm not gonna go into too much detail for 3D sketching. We'll have an advanced course or advanced webinar of this as well. It's just to give you the basic understanding of that there is options of doing 3D sketching. So I'm just gonna exit this sketch. Okay, one of the things I just wanna mention as well is, we said that you can go and draw on planes. So let's say for example, I exit the sketch now, and I've got my default planes. I'm just gonna highlight them all. I might have a plane that's somewhere in a different location. So let's use this right plane as an example. Quick tip, you can go and make copies of different planes. So with that, you can either use this feature options, reference geometry, plane, and then go and maybe go and place that somewhere specifically like that. 
this could be maybe a hundred that's one of the options but you can also use if you click it and you notice that there's some blue balls or blue icons i can hold my control button if i hold my control button and i drag that'll actually create a plane then for me so it's just basically making a copy of my plane so that's just a quick tip for you and you can go and draw on like a 3d sketch let's say i'm on a 3d sketch and i want to go and draw on a specific plane you can also go and do that okay so you can pre-select sketches do a 3d sketch on plane so basically just this option is you highlight the specific plane that you want to go and draw on so you can either go and place it in space or maybe create some reference planes for you and then start to work on that reference plane okay so just keep that in mind maybe this is also a good tip that i can give you so in in the newer versions of solidworks you can do mirror entities of 3d sketching so you can go and select 3d sketches to be a mirror so if you use the different options you can go copy it you can mirror it there is lots okay just be aware of that i'm not going to do that now because otherwise my wildman profile might not work out so i'm just going to roll back there another tip maybe you don't know what a rollback is rollback means i can go back into my design tree and then whatever i add now will be added just above this blue line okay so for example if i draw a new sketch now i'm just going to draw a sketch on this front plane just as a circle just take note where that sketch is placed okay so the rollback bar means i go back up in my levels in my feature tree if i add anything now it'll only add it there it won't affect anything downstream and then if you want you can just go and roll it down again okay just another quick tip for you okay i'm just going to quickly go back to my powerpoint so the main thing is how to create sketches and sketches on planes um, and then the last one is this converting solids into 3D sketches. So let me just quickly show that to you as well. I'm just gonna create a new part. So if we draw a, a very simple part, I'm just gonna draw a square block that's 100 by 100. And I make an extrusion of that part. I'm gonna say mid plane, also 100. One of the nice features is, let's say for example, I want to take all of these edges and I want to convert that into a 3D sketch because I don't want actually a solid, but I want a wireframe of this part that could maybe be um, a square tubing or a hollow tubing or anything like that. One of the nice options in SolidWorks is we can go and create a 3D sketch. I can select one of the edges, press Control A, It'll select all of the edges and click convert entities. What that does, it creates a 3D sketch of the box, technically a wireframe of that box. And if we go and hide this now, you'll see that I've got one 3D sketch of that box. And now we can use this sketch and go and add wildments to it or do anything onto this specific thing. So again, start a 3D sketch, select one edge, and then control a to select all or you can go and select individual edges and do a convert entities okay just another quick tip for you let me go back okay that's just the basics of 3d sketching if you have any questions feel free to ask us and i'll glad to show you more information okay so the main part where 3d sketches is used is mostly for wildments so what are wildments okay so wildments is mostly all of the standardized items that you can go and buy from a company like max steel for example and you want to have square tubing or c sections or channels or you want to have i beams there's quite a few on the slide you'll actually see there's quite a few different options that you have now if you want to build a frame for a house or anything like that you can go and draw 3d sketches and just go and put in all the pillars go and put in all the cross sections 
that is then done with Wildman. So any structural system that you want to create, we use in SolidWorks, we use the option of Wildman. And you can actually go and create your own Wildman as well. So if you have something that you reuse quite often, you can go and create your own specific sketch for that. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how to use the existing Wildman, how you can create more Wildman, and then just the Wildman cut list. So a cut list is very important for any structural engineer because they want to know that I need 12 pieces of 1.2 meter C channel, I, I need 15 pieces of this so that I can go and buy everything in bulk. Because remember, most of the times you can only buy it in, let's say, six meter samples. So I need to know and go and calculate saying, okay, if I need 12 of this size, I must actually go and buy five pieces of six meters. Very important engineering aspect to remember. Okay, so I'm going back into SolidWorks. And now you'll see that we have this Wildman tab. Also new in 2020 is the structural system. So that's a new type of way of, how you can automate quite a lot of different entities and make one structural system with the Wildmans. So in our next webinar, we'll just actually go and explore into that as well. But I'm just gonna focus on the this, this simple one that's just structural members. Okay, structural members, important thing for structural members is that in your file properties, you must just go and show where is the, the different Wildman types. Um, so it's just your file properties and file inf information is very important. But in my example, I have one that's maybe an anti-inch or anti-inch training. So you can have different folders where all of them reside in. And I'm just gonna look at this anti-inch training. So within that, there might be different options like a channel is a nice flyer. Then I've got beams, angles, round tubing, just to name a few. And I'm just gonna look at this tube square. Again, within that, they might be different sizes. So all of these sizes are linked to my specific part. So when you go and create one, you can actually go and specify what the sizes are. And I'm just gonna use a random example, like a two by two by 0 0.25. And there you'll notice, so it'll actually take that entire profile, do a sweep on that path, and then you can go and select the different sections where you want the sweep to take place. And you have some other examples, um, how you can maybe go and change the alignment or locate profile. I can go and select different entities on this sketch to go and move my profile around. But to keep everything simple, I'm just gonna use this center one, okay. Again, I can go and add multiple sketches to this. Okay, you'll notice that because I selected something that is vertical, um, you have to, for this entire group, all of them have to be vertical. But you can also now create new group. So again, new group, I can go and select them all in line as an example. But again, you'll see I can't go to the bottom one because there's a separate type of entities. But just notice here, you've got an option for different treatments. So you can have this first one as end mitre, or you can have one like that, that is your end butt or end butt to here. Number two is also an option. I'm just gonna keep it on this first one. And then I'm gonna create another group just to conclude my bottom one as well. So now this maybe looks quite tough. If I go and change my 3D sketch, we can actually see a better example. But remember this sketch was actually created from a solid part. So how would we go about to change that? I can just go and edit my feature. I'm gonna make this a meter. And then the sketch that is in this part, I'm also gonna change that to be a thousand so a thousand is a meter click okay exit sketch okay remember i created my 3d sketch with convert entities so this sketch is linked to my original part and my original sketch and that's the reason why if i update my boss this first original one my 3d sketch will actually update as well 
So that's just a quite a nice feature to remember. And lastly, I just want to show you. So we've got options in Wildmans where you can actually do a trim and extend, or you can maybe use end caps or gussets. I'm just going to quickly do a trim and extend. So I can use which body is to be extended. I'm going to extend both, or you can extend all three of them. But for my example, I'm just going to extend them up until that face. So you can go and select different options like that. So if I select two faces, my one part will extend up until the first and my other one up until the next. And if I now click OK, they can go through each other. So you can also go and maybe go and change them around so that they can't penetrate. So you, there's different options in this trim and extend. Okay, even if I go and change the options that we had, you can do that. So this example is an end miter, click okay. That end miter, you'll now see that it will actually be a 45 degree angle. Or we can go and say, we maybe want to trim this body and the trimming boundary we're going to use is these two, or that one as an example. And look, there, now it will trim those to each other. So you can go and specify exactly which ones you want to trim to each other. You can play around with this, different options, different selection sets. You can have other ones like, for example, that invite that I spoke about and invite two as well. So there's different ways of how you can go and create that. Okay, so that's just a quick introduction into Wildmans. I'm going to hand over to EFA now. We don't want to go in too much depth in all of the webinars. We can rather do an advanced session next time. So I'm gonna hand over to Eafan and Eafan is going to explain to you. Just let me, sorry, just the last thing that I wanted to show you is that this, the important thing that I mentioned was the cut list. And the cut list is if I click on this on the left hand side, I have properties. These properties are specific for the weldment. So there you'll notice I've got this length, I've got the angle where it got cut at, angle, angle, angle direction, I can add descriptions to it. And you can go and add this in a drawing. So Again, if you make a drawing of this part, you, have, you can either use a bomb, a bill of materials, or you can use a cut list. So we'll give you some documentation with regards to that as well. Okay, but let me hand over to Irfan um, and let's get onto the fun part of flow simulation. Uh, thank you, Pierre. Uh, let me just share my screen here. Okay. Uh, hi everyone, uh, good afternoon. I am going just to talk you through uh, SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, everything that's involved with it, and the capabilities and so forth. Um, so SOLIDWORKS flow simulation is unique in the flow simulation world in that it is fully integrated with a CAD package, uh, SOLIDWORKS. So you don't have to go and create specific volumes for your flow beforehand or model the negative space of the flow. You can go straight from your geometry and just instantly uh, generate your flow region. And um, there's also a lot of other things added. So any material properties you have will be pulled through, um, even circuit boards. So if you're using the PCB adding, you could use that with the uh, electronics module and flow simulation, which um, I'll cover in uh, later in this same section. Let me just, okay, so there's, several base capabilities. You can do your internal and external flow. You can do heat transfer between various uh, parts. Uh, you can do rotational flows. You can have a dedicated rotating region when you do flow simulation to make uh, solve time a bit quicker for rotating regions. Uh, results exchange. So that is where you take the pressure and the forces results from your flow simulation and put that into your FEA, seeing what the stresses are and so forth. Um, various other things, compressible flow, uh, non-Newtonian, um, time-dependent things, etc., and so forth. Now, on top of flow simulation, available on all um, 
uh, university SolidWorks licenses, you also get access to the e electronic cooling module, which specifically adds several additional features specifically for electronic cooling. So it has a database of fans, of heat sinks, heating materials, uh, so forth. Um, it can take a base geometry, take the PCB and give you specific properties for the multi-layer PCB, so the thermal properties and so forth. So you don't have to go and work that out yourself or guess. And um, there's also heat pipes and so forth. Um, on top of, or in addition, there's also the HVAC. So what the HVAC module does is it's specifically for uh, simulating airflow in rooms and so forth. Uh, again, it also has its own database with over a thousand different fans from manufacturers, um, additional material properties for things like walls, insulation, uh, glass, and so forth. Um, it also includes a new feature called comfort parameters. So um, how comfortable someone feels in a room is a function of various factors, humidity, uh, flow speed, uh, temperature, etc., and then SolidWorks has this all integrated into a comfort parameter, which you can use to check, okay, is the entire volume of the room uh, suitable or is one spot, maybe there's too much air flowing there, maybe it's too humid, etc. You could also do tracer studies to see how particles spread throughout a room. And lastly, you get access to some pretty advanced radiation simulation as well. Um, so semi-transparent uh, substances, uh, sun tracking, etc. Um, now, there's just some visual examples of flow simulation. So, electronic cooling up here, a valve over here, uh, some more HVAC up here in the right hand corner. Um, and if I can show you, so this is a, a mixed flow environment, so, a mix between gas and liquid flow. And we can see just the mixing of the fluids. We can obviously have rotating uh, components in our simulation, so, it's not just all static regions. Um, SolidWorks also has the capability to do a free surface flow simulation. So anything where you have a free surface of fluid, uh, you can do that. Another example over here. And these are just basic examples. You can push this however far you want. Uh, some drag simulation. So in this specific example, we are looking at the vortex being formed behind this truck here. And you can see here, we have that progression of the vortex forming, etc. And you can use uh, these types of drag simulations to do literally anything. You can uh, calculate drag coefficients and so forth. Um, getting to the electronic cooling module, so because you have a, lot, a very large database added to that, you get some quite advanced features. So just the fan database in and of its own is, um, can save you so much time because getting fan curves, getting um, the properties of fans can be quite difficult. Uh, so the included fan database can really help you just um, get more accurate results much quicker. Um, and I think, uh, just soon we'll just do a quick poll and um, asking about uh, just what flow simulation packages you do, but I'll have peers start that soon. Um, like I mentioned earlier, heat pipes and PCB generators in the electronics cooling module, um, large design database and so forth. Uh, HVAC, like I mentioned, the comfort parameters, the advanced radiation model so you can do things like it actually does ray tracing to see where uh, the light will travel where it bounces etc uh, can deal with semi-transparent solids and so forth uh, really quite advanced tools um, for simulation and then also just the massive material database um, that you can draw from as well um, and just some further examples so these are actually mixed study uh, study multi-physics study so we've taken flow simulations if we take like this billboard down here we've done a flow simulation of that and then the pressures from there we've pulled into a static analysis to see okay what's the deflection on this part um, up here we've taken the uh, thermal portions and we've done a, a thermal analysis here and this can 
not just be a standard thermal analysis, but you can also do a thermal static or thermal uh, stress analysis. So you can see, okay, but the expansion and everything of the joints, is everything fine? Are some of my heat sinks going to uh, uh, lift themselves off their uh, components and so forth? Uh, Pierre, I think let's start with uh, that poll we have. Uh, the first one regarding the simulation packages. Yes, I've started that poll. Um, okay. So I think most of, I think there's still just four that needs to vote. If you haven't voted yet, you can just maybe check there at the bottom. There, there's a small poll that we just started. Let's just give it a, a few more seconds for everyone to finish the poll. Okay, yeah. Perfect, everyone answered. Thank you very much. It's actually, it's quite good to see the different options that the different universities actually use. Okay. I'm gonna end, I'm gonna end this one. Do you wanna start the other one now as well? No, just after yeah, so, you explain. Yeah, so, um, uh, Pierre, you can start the next one, but let me explain before anyone answers. So we have three designs here for a um, specific tube in a medical device. Now, air enters on the short end and comes out on this long end. But we want to know which design has the lowest pressure drop and also deflects the least due to the air coming into the design. So the poll will just ask you two questions. One, which one has the lowest pressure drop? And the second question is which of these designs will have the best um, or the least amount of deflection in the part. So I just want you guys to answer that and then we'll, we'll look at the results. So as you can see here from design one, we have two sharp 90 degree corners. Design two, we have a large bend radius. Uh, so a longer time for the air to be in the tube, maybe that will affect it. And design three, we have a very sharp and short travel for this. Same uh, 180 degree bend as design two, just a shorter radius. And so maybe that one will be the best one. Let's go ahead and see. Has everyone answered, Pierre? Uh, there's just one vote that is left. So maybe just the one person, you can just select any of those options. Unfortunately, I can't tell who the person is. <laughs> but it's fine, I'll just leave it open for a few more seconds and then you can show the differences. Okay, so while we're busy with that, I'm just gonna talk through um, and about this whole problem. So a lot of people use uh, simulation merely as a gut check at the end of a design to see, is this gonna be fine for what we need? But simulation can be so much more. It can actually give us our most optimum design. Um, and we'll uh, do further webinars on this with FEA and so forth. But with flow simulation, we can set up a case study for each of our designs and have it test it for us and see which one would be best. And it's actually fairly easy to do. Yeah. So here's a, just a quick time breakdown for that. Uh, five minutes just to build the configuration of this design. Uh, four minutes to quickly define the study. Um, we'll take about 25 minutes to run all four studies. And then in the final one, uh, we make, just make a decision. So in about half an hour, we've um, made a big decision here in terms of which of these designs are best. And that can have a huge effect just on uh, the viability of our product. Um, and it stops us from having to do further design iteration later on in the design process, which can be expensive and just time consuming in the end. Um, so Pierre, what are the results? Okay, so for the first one, 55% um, of them selected design two and 45 selected design three. Okay, so let's have a look at the three designs here. 
So design two was the one that won out. And that is mainly just due to the uh, large bend radius and not the short bends we have in design one or design three. So obviously a larger bend radius, just the flow has more time and can more gradually be um, redirected, uh, similar to if you were turning in a car, obviously turning more slowly, you'll um, keep much more of your velocity than if you were, and momentum if, than if you were to turn uh, more sharply. So that's why design two one now. Now, and then the last one, sorry, I can just give that as well, is 55% selected design two, 36% design three, and design one had one vote. Okay, so um, in this whole section here, we've, we see design one has a, a huge pressure drop. Um, so we're just gonna completely scratch that from the stress analysis. We can save some time there. So testing between these final two, you can see here, uh, design three actually has uh, quite a lot of deflection in the end, uh, likely due to, uh, just because of the sharp corner, the velocities and everything involved, uh, they're not fully um, developed by the time they hit here and then they just start to deflect the tip here at the end. And so design two ended up being our best design. And you can do these with a lot of things. You can do it with plastic injection molding, with plastic simulation, which is something we'll talk about another time. Uh, FEA simulation, you don't even have to do simulations. There's a feature in SOLIDWORKS called design studies. You can set up a design study for anything. So if you want to reduce the mass of a part, um, if you want to try and get the optimum shape or geometry of the part, if you want to get the least amount of force needed to lift a certain part, um, all things you can do within SOLIDWORKS. Um, yeah, and that's uh, flow simulation. If you guys have any questions, you can just type it in the chat box. Um, you can also fill out the feedback form, please. Uh, the one linked here, I've also added it to the chat. Let me see if I can get a better link, a clickable link. Add that to the chat. Yes. Um, so if you guys have any questions, just let me know. I'll try and answer them. Uh, Pierre can also answer questions. Um, and yeah, but let's see. I'll also open up the feedback form if any of you uh, add any questions on there. And we'll go through a more technical of how to start a flow simulation, but I really recommend you guys to go to my.solidworks.com and do the tutorials there. They really are very thorough um, and they show you um, from step one, never worked with flow simulation before, how to get started setting the study up. They will talk yeah, through some of the theory. It doesn't seem like there's any questions coming in, hmm. but remember to, yeah, Go and follow us on YouTube. Um, we're still continuing with those MECAD minutes. Um, every Thursday, we also have a webinar. Um, you can all gladly join our commercial webinars as well if you would like. And like on this page, you can see we've got our LinkedIn page and the MECAD minute page. Um, and we'll send those recordings out to all of your lecturers so they can actually put it on their website as well. So if you have any questions, you can go onto these pages and maybe just reach out to us and go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I think that is that. If there's no other questions, then we're done for today. Thank you everyone for joining. You must have a wonderful weekend and join us next week again. We'll have another webinar on Friday afternoon next week. Cheers guys, enjoy your weekend. Thanks everyone.